Welcome to the Business Information Buffet Podcast, also known as the Bib Podcast, where everybody eats, powered by the College of Southern Nevada. Each week, we'll be featuring business owners and entrepreneurs that will provide their personal recipes for business, powerful conversations, and knowledge of the business world. We amplify the stories of various backgrounds, cultures, and expertise. Our self-identity is as diverse as our social community. We cultivate a community of like-minded individuals that share their different perspectives, broadening our worldview. Are you ready? This is the Bib Podcast, where everybody eats. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Welcome back to the Business Information Buffet Podcast, also known as the Bid Podcast, where everybody eats under the operation of the College of Southern Nevada here at the North Las Vegas campus for another entertaining, impactful episode. I'm your host, Sean Tory, with our DJ, DJ Icebreak. DJ Icebreak. Our episode today is called Entertainment is Best at P.M. Oh, listen, y'all gonna catch the reference later. Y'all to catch the reference right now. Y'all gonna catch the reference later with two special guests. Now, listen, ladies and gentlemen, you know, being from Las Vegas, you run into a lot of gentlemen who do impactful things and just really represent the culture. Can I, can I say that, Curtis? Represent the culture and make sure that everybody feels like they're hometown heroes. And these two gentlemen right here, they truly make everybody, everybody in Vegas feel like they celebrities. Like, seriously, <laughs> with every single event that they do, it's not even just celebrity, but make you feel like, yo, this is this is home. Celebrating us. And we, I have it. I've been traveled. I've traveled a lot of cities. I've been to a lot of events. And I've never been to events where they highlight the locals to where they need to be represented. So I want to first, first, before I even give you their bios. I got to give them their flowers for that, okay? <laughs> so, our guests today are two powerhouses in the Las Vegas entertainment scene. Our first guest to the far back over there, to the far right. Born and raised in Las Vegas, received his bachelor's and master's degrees at Texas Southern University. Yeah. He currently serves as a culture curator. Oh, my goodness. Continuously connecting entrepreneurs in Las Vegas through a method of what he likes to call extravagant business meetings. I like that, sir. And then this gentleman to the left of him. Yes, sir. The other DJ I would call if it wasn't DJ Icebreak. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Our second guest is a pioneer in the hip-hop and R&B scene in the radio community with an impressive 10-year radio career. Come on, man. Scratch it up for my man. Scratch it up for him. His musical industry influence is deeply rooted due to his upbringing in Brooklyn, New York, and Las Vegas. Bring it the West Coast to the East. Bring it the East Coast to the West, I should say. My apologies. He is heavily involved with creating, facilitating events, exploring the internet, radio, and podcast space with providing a dynamic experience. I'm giving it a flowers today. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and they... The entertainment kings, the nightlife extraordinaires. Keep going. Come on, can I, can I keep going? Yes, sir. The co founders of PM Entertainment, Akeem Brantley yeah. and Matt DJ Missy Rogers. What's going on, my guys? Hello. What's happening? Welcome. Bro? What's up, man? What's going down? Man, it's been a blessing, man. I've been waiting to have y'all on this show for a minute. Thank y'all for coming. Please, please, man. Thank y'all for thank y'all for coming. Would y'all like the introduction? We, we, just good? Absolutely, it was no, great, absolutely. bro. Absolutely, that was amazing. <laughs> come on, man. come on. Man. We appreciate the invite too, bro. Man, of course, of course, I had to. It, it was especially because this show represents not only just for Las Vegas but globally for the community. And I'm like, man, I feel like it was important for our subscribers, the audience who continuously watch us, to know about you too. Especially if they come to Vegas, because many times people come to Vegas and they're asking me, "Hey, where where do we go?" And I'm always sending them y'all Instagram. I'm always sending them y'all y'all flyers because Appreciate that. the consistency within y'all two is phenomenal. Not just y'all two, but your team as well. Absolutely. Um, so I want to salute y'all and the whole PM Entertainment. I know it's a group, it's a whole family of y'all. Yeah, we'd have packed it out up in here for sure. Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I was like, you know, when you were like, "Hey, uh, do we bring the whole team?" I'm like, "No." You two are fine. <laughs> we have a couch, but it ain't big enough. <laughs> so, man, please tell tell the audience about y'all, man. Tell, tell them about Mizzy. Tell them about Akeem. Tell them just about y'all, man. Go ahead, bro. 
<laughs> you want to start me off early? Yes, sir. Um, you said about myself or yeah, about just, yeah, just about about yourself. We'll get to the business in a minute, but tell people about you. Man, I'm a I'm a lover. You know, I just I I, I love everybody. I try to you know I try to do my best to to be a lover. Okay. Um, you know, I'm born and raised in the city. Come on. Uh, you know, from the west side. Yes, sir. You know, Inglestead and Lake Mead. Inglestead and Lake Mead. Come on. You know, so from the uh, view. You know, I'm. I'm a Vegas native, and I love my city. Mm. You know, I, I went to school in Texas where I was able to, you know, kind of see what culture looks like. Mm. And, um, you know, when I when I left there, you know, I, I made it, you know, a passion of mine to come back out here mm. and try to integrate what I've seen there in our community. Mm. You know, so um, that's a little bit about myself. You know, I know. And I know y'all are uh, y'all used to be M fives, you know. Yes, sir. You know, yes, of course sir. we we can bring that up. Cavalier, League, you know, three time champion. <laughs> it's you cool. Know, you know, the the wins don't stop. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that, that was great. You know, because y'all between you, Mook, and all the gentlemen, because we it was always between back then for us M fives, Divas, and the Cavalier. League. Right. And Sigma Bay, shout out to them. Omega Gen, shout out to y'all. No right. shade, but uh, <laughs> it was it was always those two, right? And uh, I remember seeing y'all. I remember seeing y'all at the Unity Step shows at UNLV, and right. I'm like, dog, I just I just want to be on stage. Like that's where I want to be. And um, I, when I became an M five, I took it serious. So I remember, but I remember the love and the unity between M fives and the Cavalier. League. Absolutely, a lot of y'all roll with each other. So. Uh, I I I have mad respect for the Capital League, and, right. and I wish I wish the youth groups were as prominent as they were back then, but they're not. But. And that's the crazy thing about it. Like I feel like that was our Vegas culture. That you works. know what I'm saying with the with the uh, Unity Fest, and mm -hmm. you know it was it, it gave you something to look forward to at the end of the year. Yep. Like man, we about to go at it. Yep. But at the end of the day, it was still love. But like when those lights went on, you know, it was a different feeling, bro. Game time. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like. That's the reason why I, I really got into nightlife because <clears throat> when those lights hit, I never I never could fulfill that again. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like that was a different feeling. Yeah. You know? So um yeah, you know, that's a little bit about myself. You know, born and raised here, Christian man, you Christian know. Man. Salute. Shout out to to, to Victory, you yeah. know, the, the victory home team. Bad. <laughs> you know, we're gonna we gonna bang the game. Everybody in that victory, <laughs> victory <come on. laughs> Uh, but yeah, you, you know, I, one thing about me, man, I just I really love my city, and I and I want to see the best for everybody. Right. You know, I don't want to be the only one. You know, to be doing something, I always want to see everybody that I'm around. Right. You know, taking it to the top, and you know, that's me. My God, appreciate that, sir, <laughs> no, Mister Matt Mizzy, <laughs> DJ Mizzy. Please <laughs> Absolutely. tell the people about you, sir. Absolutely. So you already know DJ Mizzy, Matt. You know. Vegas by way of Brooklyn, New York. Uh, so I moved out here probably, what was it, 2001. So I moved out here right after 9-11. Oh, from, man. Fresh, fresh out of Brooklyn. Um, so Vegas for me was, 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 was a culture shock mm. for me. You know what I'm saying? Coming from Brooklyn to Vegas, it, it was definitely a different experience. Right. Uh, but then going through that, through the whole high school thing, you know, kind of being an introvert at the time. I still carry that with me in mm. some ways. If you really know me, know me. Right, right, right. <laughs> if I don't know you, then I'm probably ducked <laughs> off somewhere. But, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So I kind of carried that with me. Uh, but then after high school, you know, I went. To, uh, I started out here. Uh, I went to Bonanza for a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And then I went to uh, Palo Verde, graduated from Palo Verde. And that was when they was busting the West Side in. So I'm very, very familiar with the West Side. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> I was very familiar with the West Side early. <laughs> um but then after that, you know, I kind of uh, jumped into, like I said, the, the radio space, being on mm -hmm. uh, Hot 97.5 for, for 10 years. Man. Um, and then kind of creating my way. Music has always been in my family, and the DJing is something I just kind of fell into. And then the whole radio lane and everything like that. Um, so early on, me and my little brother, DJ So Hype, used to do so much stuff in the city. Shout out to So uh, Hype, too. Absolutely. Oh absolutely. We used to do so much stuff in the city. Uh, that kind of st stuck with me with, like, doing different events and building my name through radio. Mm -hmm. And um, just kind of balancing the two, because that was two different worlds. Like, radio and the streets were two completely different things. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, just just moving through that space and creating that name and then uh, seeing what a, what a culture was moving in Vegas, both in a positive and a negative light. Right. Um, when I left radio, it was like, ah, uh, 
I could go anywhere and do this at this point. I got enough experience. Right. Uh, but you know, I was tapped in with my brother at the time. It was just like, bro, we could take this somewhere else. We can actually get a city something that's lacking. Right. And he helped me see that vision. And you know what I'm saying? We've, we've been pumping ever since. And Man. It's, 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 it's not easy. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And then, you know, just taking my own Vegas experience. I mean, at this point, you know, a lot of people, oh, you're from Vegas. I definitely, Mizzy is from Vegas. Yeah. Through and through. Absolutely. Right, that, right. That, that is, that is, that is 100% true. Uh, but just taking my experiences, being kind of like on outside looking in and then entrenching myself in the culture. I feel like we do have a culture here. So I'm going to say in the Vegas culture. Um, and, and like he said, being able to bring those different experiences, me being from Brooklyn, bringing that to the to the fold and uh, helping move all of that forward. And also showing people who, like you said, in and out of town, we're talking off, right. off air in and out of town, showing them that we do have a culture and, and uh, different things we have to bring to the table as well. Um, and showing, bring that to the light versus off the strip. Off the strip. Yeah, no, I wholeheartedly agree. And like you actually segued into the, to the question. The next question I had was, you know, with both of y'all experiences, right? How did it prepare you both to create PM entertainment? Cause I know it was like, it was a lounge before, right? Or yeah. was it? Yeah. So, or it wasn't, it was always PM entertainment. No, no, it wasn't always PM entertainment. Okay. Was, Cause I um, remember it's a different name before. Yeah. Right? So we went through a couple of different versions of this. Um, so like I said, uh, me personally, um, doing events with so hype at right. first, um, and then just do, I did a lot of events with so hype. So the backstory for me and radio, I just was on a street team at first, but I was like one of the old, like at one time they did a casting call. Those, they hire like, 30, 30 people right, right. out the gate. But I was one of the oldest. At that mm-hmm. time, I was like 21, 22. Right. Um, so I had to do most of the club events and stuff like that. So I took off in the radio field uh, very quickly. But that's when I met So Hype. He was doing like all the school takeovers or whatever. Oh, okay, I remember so I, that. I, I would jump on the mic. He'd be DJing. And so this is before I even started DJing, Whoa. honestly. So Man. I would jump on the mic. He'd be DJing. We'd do whatever. You know, okay. two little light skinned cats, whatever. You know, <laughs> <laughs> the, school, right, the, school, right. the school kids loved it for sure. You oh, know for sure. Saying? So that kind of took on a life of its own. Then when I did start DJing and we started doing events outside of the radio, that kind of took off. And then I started to build a name as a DJ by myself, especially like I said through radio, coming up under uh, DJ Franzen and uh, Dre Day, mm-hmm. uh, Big D, all these people who had huge names in the city at the time. You know, what I'm saying shout out to them for taking me under their wing. Uh, I kind of took off kind of quick, you know, right. through Crown Nightclub, Strip Hop. Oh, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you bringing it back. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? I was entrenched in all of that. Uh, so so my name grew very quickly in the uh, in the city. And then, um, you know, just through that whole space, you remember how the city used to be back then. Yeah, I remember. Everything yeah. short-lived. Yes, let's definitely. Put it, definitely. Let's put it that way. Everything definitely was short-lived. very short-lived. So, you know, I bounced around and did different things. And then uh, kind of came into the space uh, with, with Joe, with doing events okay, um, through DJ, and, and um, I forgot what space we got into, but we started to bring people in. And um, no, before that, uh, Keem had reached out to me to okay. DJ, with actually with Icebreak over yeah. at, uh, over at Geisha House, kind of. Uh, so that kind of that kind of yeah yeah. <laughs> so that kind of we had that relationship from there for j- him just booking me to DJ at Geisha House right. or whatever. And uh, when that came to an end, um, I was doing stuff with Joe. And uh, we had an open night to do something. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I hit up Keem to come do it. That didn't work out. Then we kind of moved on to Mist. And okay, brought, I remember that. So, so at first it was, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that would be the start of PM Entertainment before PM Entertainment. But right. it was me, Joe, and Keem. Keem, right. I remember um, that. Then that, obviously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then it was uh, me, Keem, and uh, we had another business partner, uh he was in our, in, in, he was in the Air Force. Air Force. He was okay. In the Air Force. Um, didn't really have no name to it, but it was just us three promoters, and that's that's where the uh, the uh, the uh, Urban Lounge and Classic Jew came. Yes, from. yes, I remember that. Um, yes, yes. Then whatever happened with, no. oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Still, still our partner, but you know we kind of kind of sliced him off, and uh, it became me and him just that Classic Jewel. Yep, I remember that. So we had a, we kind of had a two year run with Classic. That was um, a good two, run. Two to three year run at Classic. That was a good and, run. And. Uh, that that did not come to an end. That was the pandemic hit. Yes. No, yeah, no, no, yeah. No, because I, I <laughs> right. remember when Facts. that. I remember you started coming over because um, I was doing well through the Wednesday with Ron. Yes, right. absolutely. So I remember y'all started coming over. I was like, oh yeah, y'all. I was like, I told, uh, I was telling uh, 
why am I? Sp- I was telling Ryan mm-hmm. and uh, Rome. her pops in Rome. Yeah. I was telling them, I was like, oh yeah, y'all about to start thumping now for real. And I was, they was like, oh for real. I was like, oh yeah, y'all don't know. I'm like, they out here. And y'all started, y'all really had it thumping. And I remember packed out, packed out, because the first time I actually was able to come and be like featured was our high school reunion, 2019. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's that was my birthday weekend too, so it all just worked out. And, and y'all y'all missed it. Oh, it, it was lit. <laughs> oh, it was lit. Oh, it, I'll I'll always remember that. I was right before the pandemic. Hold on, that yes. wasn't when you were swag surfing on the on the yeah, stage. Yeah, that was when I was swag surfing on the I, stage. I wasn't there for that. Nah, you that was that was the following year, twenty twenty. Oh, okay, that was following. That was twenty twenty. I still swag surfed then too. Yeah, but, <laughs> but, that ain't going nowhere. <laughs> but that ain't going nowhere. Right, right. But twenty nineteen. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, like we was on stage. Everyone from the reunion came, and then plus y'all regulars, and it was crazy. Like, Where was we at? What was we doing? I think y'all was out of town. Oh, he's probably in Houston. Probably yeah, in y'all, Houston. Was, y'all was in Houston. <laughs> that sounds right. Yeah, yeah, yeah that homecoming. Yeah, that oh, def- that's right. TSU. That, yeah, that definitely tracks. Yeah. I still need that shirt, by the way. Uh, <laughs> I got you, bro. I'll be I, so I want that. I got you. <laughs> no, but I want that shirt because he, he had the TSU shirt. And I was like, oh, I need that. <laughs> I need that. But no, but, but yes, proceed. But yeah, you're right, because I remember classic. Yeah, that was classic. so much fun. So oh. that, that kind of laid the foundation those two years. Um, and then, like I said, unfortunately, the pandemic hit. Yeah, pandemic. And, um, you know, just abiding by everybody had to sit down. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So we, we sat down. Um, you know, through that time, this 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 guy became my brother. You know what I'm saying? So, man, salute, man. Yeah, Come on. Yeah. Get flowers, man. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, you know. I think we both we both freshly had kids around that time. You had your first, and I had my third. I think they got pregnant the same night. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, so, not for no, real. No, though. Hey, no, 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 no. no. Side, side, so, 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 sidebar. <laughs> he, he really his his son was born with uh, more. March, no, April eighteenth. No, April eighteenth. Right. My, my son was born May eighteenth. That's hilarious. But, no, but his but son was, came a month early. My son oh, came, came a month, month early. early. But y'all was supposed to be around due the same time. Yeah. Gotcha. So, so let me say that again. <laughs> April eighteenth and May eighteenth. His came a month early. That's crazy. So we would have damn near been on the same day, if not within a few days of each other. See, had, that's dope. Yeah. So that's why we have to stop <laughs> drinking so much <laughs> together. <laughs> So yeah, <laughs> so we had to sit down, and you know what I'm saying we 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 obviously you know just kept in contact, and you know what I'm saying, and then when God allowed us the time to come back and do whatever, you know we figured it out, and right. through, through that time frame of classic Jew laying the foundation, because there's a whole backstory to that of becoming politically in line and all of those mm-hmm. things. PM Entertainment was born out of that Assaulted's place. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah. Assaulted's place, and then now you guys are at the Audible. Are you still at our house? No, 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 no. Okay, yeah, so, so Audible and, and uh, Siva, Siva and Nora. Okay, cool, cool. So then, can y'all think of a time? Because you started going into it, especially when the pandemic hit, and with your experience, I know there's been it's nightlife here in Vegas. Nightlife in Vegas, it's very rare if certain spots stay open. Mm-hmm. Um, past like I would say five years, right? And I think classic, they're they're closely approaching ten in a little bit, right? But. Can you think of a time where y'all planned something and it didn't go accordingly? Like, how did you make it work? Oh, that Man, happens all the time. Yeah, that happened. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we even like before we we got together, right? We were trying to do something on a Monday called Red Cup Mondays, and I was just like, "Man, this gonna work." We got Monday Night Football. We got uh, okay. the Makes livest sense. team in the in the city at the, at that time. I think it was still a One Nation group. Mm, okay. And we brought, and I'm like, man, we got Mizzy. You know what I'm saying? We're going we gonna to bring the crowd out. And then we used to sit there like, damn, this shit ain't working out, bro. Right, 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 right. You know what I'm saying? So, and, and that happens That happens a lot. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you shoot and, and it just doesn't stick. Right. You know, but I feel like those are the things that you can learn from it and, and, and continuously just build on what the brand is. Right. Um, so, yeah, that, that happens all the time. Gotcha. I just feel like people give up, though. You know, that that's usually what happens. Like, when certain things don't go their way, they're like, dang, this ain't for me, and they move on. Right, 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 right. That's true. That's you know? true. And so, yeah, that, that happens a lot, bro. Yeah. Uh, but I, within those times, what, more, you have many more successes than... Oh, yeah, we definitely getting a lot more W's than L's, for okay, sure. Okay, right. But with, with, with the W's comes the L's. It comes please, the L's, right. Please, please believe me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like it, it, and it'll, it'll hit you out of nowhere. It'll be a reality check. So even at Sultans, like, I know everybody remembers the, the you know, I'm pretty sure when you think back, you're thinking about, man, people everywhere. Man. Models going crazy. You crazy. know what I'm saying? But there's been some times where we've been definitely punched in the mouth. Like, 
all right, we come in thinking this, you know, it's all them popping. <laughs> right, right. 10, 20 people in that thing. <laughs> we like, dang. The what? whole night. Yeah, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> it'd be certain, certain days. <laughs> yeah, certain days where it'd be like, what happened? Like, <laughs> nah, I definitely get you. <laughs> and he would have to talk me off the, because I'm like, bro, <laughs> yeah. I'm because I'm, I'm a perfectionist, though. Right, you know right, what I'm right, saying? Right. And so, like, when, when things don't go, I'd be like, bro, I done did all this work. I done put all these flowers up, you right, know what right. I'm saying? And, and ain't nobody came out. I'm tripping with everybody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> No, trust me, I feel you. I, I, I feel Be you. like, bro, man, come on, man. We can't, we can't win them all, you know. No, you can't, can't win them all. Yeah, yeah and, and, them and it happens. It's it, time, and I feel like it's very essence, right? Right. Because um, you, you, you pretty much talked about one theory. Because this next question I have for you with the Monday Red Cup. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I'm like, man, that does sound good, but it didn't work out, right? Right. But what are some things you've experienced that could have worked out in theory, but did not go that way in practice? Like, what's another example? Could have worked out in theory, but didn't work. Come out that way in practice, right? So the red. Um, so I think red I think I got I got a good one as a classic. So when we started at classic, uh, we actually I don't know why we do this to us. So I guess this was like a a, 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 a pre a pre for what was about to come a pre. <laughs> I, I, I don't know practice. I guess, but when we came back to the table, we started out with I know Icebreak knows this uh, with a with a with a day party day talks. Oh, uh, I miss oh, I miss day we talks. Immediately, oh, I miss we day immediately talks. went to classic jewel. <laughs> yeah, and did uh, trap soul. Okay, the karaoke. I remember trap soul. Yes. So while 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 the karaoke was crazy, right. And like I said, Icebreak was there for this. So I know, <laughs> bro, if we could not get a soul to sing in that mug right. for hours up until like the last hour, everybody wanted to sing. Right. Like, I, it used to baffle me, like, because there'll be so many people in there, but everybody just be looking at each other. They want to talk. Hey, like, I don't, I don't but, know. Who going to get up on yeah, stage who, and embarrass themselves? Right. Right. Yeah. right, exactly. <laughs> and then the last, the one o'clock come, everybody want to sing. Or, or everybody party, and now people want to sing. It's like, oh, bro, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, that was definitely an event that, what? How long did that last? Like a month, like a month or two, maybe before we what? just had. I mean, and that's what birthed Classic Saturdays because oh like, yeah, bro, we we definitely got to get that. rid of the the karaoke. It's not work, and it was on a Saturday night. It was like it was the. It used to be the most frustrating thing <laughs> on earth, especially coming off a of detox every week. Like I bro. missed, I missed detox, and then I do miss detox. And we, then we, we all used to do that in the urban. Yeah, right, absolutely right. no detox was different. <sighs> detox but was a different. We time. argued with each other like, man, you got to go up there and do a song. You got to get everybody started. You gotta go, <laughs> like, bro. I don't want to. I'm gonna do the same song I do every week. Like, I don't want to. I mean, Ja Rule and ja Rule. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, man, messing with me. I definitely would have gone up there and did that type of Campbell. You right, know right, what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Always get the lady started. <laughs> and. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so that, I mean, that was that was a, a a great thing for what was to come as far as just you know doing things that just wasn't placed properly. Gotcha. Or. or, or I mean, now everybody and their mama want to do karaoke. I mean, that's true. And, and, and I mean, I think we like to call ourselves trailblazers. I mean, but then, like, if you know anything about the industry, hip hop or whatever, we, we really just remix it a bunch of stuff and put in our own. And put our own spin to it. Yeah. Spin to it. Absolutely. Um, but a lot of stuff we see in the city now, you know, we was doing two, three, four, or five years ago. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and now we're seeing it. I think. We help build the culture. I mean, I know we help build the culture, but right. as far as I love to see that start to everybody start to do things that we were trying to do. Right, right, right. A long time ago. And it's like if people are taking to it now. Absolutely. But I mean, that would be one thing for sure. It was like, bro, this just ain't working. Mm -hmm. And it definitely got switched. <laughs> definitely Real quick. got Real switched. Quick. <laughs> but no, I appreciate y'all giving me uh, like that recipe. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that all these lessons that y'all took into actually making your sauce. And we're going to get to the sauce a little bit later, but are you gentlemen ready for the next segment? Let's do yep. it. I'm going to get y'all, take y'all to the hot seat. You know what I'm saying? So in this segment, we provide in-depth questions to learn more about you as a guest, right? And about your business, right? So it's used to be fast, rapid, fast questions, but we're going to get to, we're going to make sure we get to the nitty gritty of needs right quick. Okay. So where did P, the name PM Entertainment come from? Mizzy. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Miz, Miz um, created it. Yeah, I definitely created it. So it's a, it's just a spin on. It's just a spin on. on, on I, I want to say a spin on, but it's just like it was clever. Okay. So I feel like it definitely was clever. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so obviously, he, his moniker is Prince Akeem. Yes. I'm, I'm Mizzy Mizzy. Matt. So PM. But then it's also you know Kings of the Nightlife. Kings of the Nightlife. You know what I'm yes, saying? sir. And then and then it actually spins into a bunch of different. Uh, business opportunities and goals that we have coming forward that the PM just fits so perfectly. I and, agree. You know, I mean, 
Honestly, protect like, me security company coming soon. Yeah, absolutely. Oh man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Facts. Hey, man, y'all get if y'all get that security company popping, then please let me know so that we can get y'all an inchy. Cause we definitely we definitely need we have one black owned security company that's uh that's a vendor or supplier through inchy. Mm-hmm. But if once you do that, once you get becoming a supplier with an inchy, you can go to any seven institutions. So you can go up Reno, go to mm-hmm. UNR, do something. Oh, man, listen, what? I'm going to put you on. I got you. Okay. That's what Absolutely. I'm talking about. <laughs> Absolutely. That's what I'm talking about. But, yes, yeah. yeah, so, I mean, the name kind of, you know what I'm saying, when I thought about it, I'm like, man, it's just it's, it's clever, and it, it just turned into so much more, and it just it just fits so well. No, I had a field day because I was sitting here like, what am I going to name your episode? <laughs> and then I was like, I thought about it. I didn't even see I didn't know that, but I was like, hmm, that clever. Prince, M- Mizzy, Matt, Entertainment. Then at night PM, I'm like y'all night y'all events are always PM. <laughs> yeah. I was like y'all clever. I, I really was like oh I'm gonna have a field day with this. In it. <laughs> yeah no I mean yeah and then you know shout out to my brother uh, the being the visionary that he is and, and so so creative and you know what I'm saying he came up with the logo and I mean it all just worked you know what I'm saying you know some some things a lot of things with us we just manifest it and and it just works itself out and that was one of the things that it just. When it came to, like I said, going through everything that we'd have been through right. separately and together, um, when we decided to actually become a legit business, yes. that's where the name and the logo and everything that goes into it, you know, we need to get all the way legit. So, I mean, the name had to go with it. No, and, and that's actually, you're, you're starting to go on my next question, because what was, because y'all been out here for a long time. We all known that. Yeah. Uh, for folks who are in Vegas, but for y'all who are just now learning about these two gentlemen, please Make sure you follow these guys. We're gonna do the we're gonna do the hashtags like the very end of the episode. But okay. PM Entertainment uh, is it, I feel like it's very important because there's so many people, so many of my frat brothers that always come to town and asking. I always point them y'all way. But the process in developing PM Entertainment, which like the business side of it, because mm-hmm. I know roughly it came out of Classic Jewel roughly during pandemic time. Yeah. So what was that process like? Because at this point, there's no there's no events for months. So how was that developing PM Entertainment? During the pandemic time, Keen. Uh, I think it was more so just like you sitting at home and, and and you really just in your mind like you know I know it's gonna open up soon, so you know what are we gonna do in order to be progressive and and really have a staple in the city, right? And you know, like I said, being that we were at home all the time and we on the phone talking, you know, um, you know we we sit back and we we talk about different things and you know what we want to put together and it's like bro, you know let's. Let's put that PM, like, when he came up with PM, man, let's do that. Like, that that's super dope because we were two separate entities. I was Prince Akeem, DJ Mizzy Matt. Right. We both had businesses, uh, you know, LLCs. Right, right. Sole proprietors, you know, but it was like, okay, let's come together and make it make sense together. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, just having that vision. Um, I think sometimes, you know, before you get um, going on whatever your goal may be, um, you have to visualize it within yourself, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, I think we just took that time and really were proactive um, about what we wanted to do um, when the city did open back up. Right. Yeah. Bro hit me and said it was time to get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. No, I agree. I Man, trust me. And, and came full swing. And I, I remember folks couldn't wait. Like, as soon as the first dry, flyer dropped, everyone was there that weekend. I remember right. that. And even that was a process within itself. You know okay. what I'm saying? Like, as far as just trying to figure it out. Like I said, when you hit me, it was like it's time to get back to work. You know, shout out to um, that the only thing that was really moving at the time was Cork and Thorn. Cork and Thorn, yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. so we, uh, he was like, bro, let's get back to work. Let's figure it out. You know, the pandemic allows us to do this, this, and this, and not this, this, and this. Um, so we birthed uh, Taco Tuesdays. Out I of remember that. that. Um, was it Taco Tuesdays? No, Tacos in a Brew. Tacos, tacos in a Brew. Tacos yeah. in a Brew. It was originally supposed to be at Cork and Thorn. Uh, that deal fell through. And um, shout out to my brother, you know, through all his uh, contacts or whatever. And uh, just being a man of the people. Right. Um, we ended up at Crave instead, which was Mimos at the time. So my brother having a previous relationship with them. And um, we, I think we were one of the, I, like I said, Cork and Thorn was figuring it out. But they mm-hmm. were probably like the only lounge that was really trying to do something. Classic came a little bit after that. Right. Uh, they, they, they started to figure it out. Uh, but I think we were like the first promotional company to come back and like start doing events right I mean, it was tacos and a brew came around because you can only do stuff in restaurants and it had to oh, be food, right. food based right 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 um so that's, that's where that's where my brother came up with tacos and a brew 
Um, and like I said, we started we started that off at Crave. I think we probably like their first of like yeah, their first yeah yeah first okay. back. You know what I'm saying? So I think we were like one of the first in the city. I'm not gonna say we were the first. I feel like we were, but um, to really bring that event style back to the you know actually doing events and entertainment. It gotcha. Was kind of that party vibe. Mm-hmm. Without so, saying, without incriminating myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, right? And, and it actually leads to my next question. Uh, now that it was, because I, I can't really say it's post-pandemic, because we're, yeah, we're still kinda, in the pandemic. We're still in it. It's just light restrictions. But what are some of the common challenges you all all face now? I say, I say post what we knew nightlife to be before the pandemic. So what, is, how, what are the challenges you all face now? Man, I don't think we face no challenges. Oh, right not now. Okay, cool. Yeah. Nah. See, that's good. Not, nothing like during the pandemic, because during the pandemic, man, it was so back and forth. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Between, you know, having to wear a mask, not having to wear a mask. Uh, you yeah, got to be, if that. you're sitting down, you can take it off. If you're standing up, you got to put it on. Or you can only have this many people at the table. Or you can only have this many tables in the spot. Right. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we operate in that 75%, 50%, 25%, 30%. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, that changing from week to week. I mean, nah, we nowhere in there. <laughs> like, <laughs> if we talking about those days, yeah, yeah I don't, we. <laughs> I, don't I never want to see that again. <laughs> oh, man, listen. Uh, I feel you, because I was sitting here like, man, listen, what's the difference between my I'm asking me off here at the table than me standing up going to the bathroom. What's the difference? Yeah. Like, it made no sense. It made no sense. Yeah, it it, no it sense. was it was ridiculous. Right. <laughs> so what are the benefits of uh I know them, but I, the people who don't, what are the benefits of going to your events? I mean, you're gonna catch the, the best vibe in the city. Um, I think you're gonna be around the best people in the city. Um, you know, you're around. One thing I like about our events is like it's almost like gumbo, right? Mm. It's like you have you know, a sprinkle of entrepreneurs. You got a sprinkle of nine to fivers. You got a, a sprinkle of street cats, mm-hmm. you know, but collectively, you know, we all come together and we all respect each other. Um, so I think that always creates a dope dynamic. You know, gumbo tastes good and True. gumbo ain't nothing without okra, like Dom said. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> and then the thing about that, you also have, you know, some of the dopest DJs that come through the city um, that's at our events all that's the time. True. You know that's what I'm true. saying? With Mizzy with a ice break, you know, with Shane O'Mac, you yeah. know, you with a D money, D money, you know what I'm saying? Like we have, we have the best of the best. So it's like, it's almost like when you go into the strip and you want to go and get you a nice, a steak dinner, right? You want to go to STK or something, take yeah. your lady out or whatever the case may be, you know, the quality going to be good, right? you know, and, and, and we really pride ourselves on that, you know, not saying that we don't like hamburger hut. Right. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes, you know, you got to take it to the next level that's if true. you want to be able to c- compete against a machine, which is the strip. You yeah, know, I feel true. like you have to have those certain things in place in order to be successful. Man, come on. Talk about that. <laughs> Talk about that. <laughs> Giving us that recipe. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Sir. So, um, I actually, you guys made it through the hot seat because <laughs> y'all made it. Because the other two questions I had, man, you really answered it. Like, and and it was really answered because it's like y'all been here for so long. The, the community, the benefits that you guys do with PM Entertainment and also with uh, Housing Assistance Corp. Right? Yeah. Um, I know you got the beautify the block. Right. Um, I know uh, Dante came onto the show early on and talked about those challenges y'all face. Right. And I love how y'all intertwine. Um, Nightlife with community. Right. Uh, that's the one thing, because y'all know I'm a community dude. Absolutely. And that was one of the best things I saw. And I'm like always killing myself because when y'all were doing Be- Beautify the Block, we're, we're here doing the show. And then I would try to come in like <laughs> late, like, hey, hey, but I love what y'all what y'all are doing between nightlife and also with Beautify the Block. And that, right. that was actually one of the best things I've seen. And uh, I appreciate that. I pray that y'all continue to keep Beautify the Block. For folks who don't know Beautify the Block, can y'all explain what Beautify the Block is? Yeah, so Beautify the Block is an initiative to um, bring awareness and and, and community uh, development within each other. Right. You know, I think one thing that um, you know when we when we were coming up as kids in the city, that's true. Um, we were able to go outside and and you know have that you know that open dialect with each other with with friends or families. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, what, what, what's the statement where they say, uh, you know, the community raises the child? Like we knew who our so elders true. were. You Everybody know? did. Yep. But right. now, you know, with with um, you know us moving out the west side or out of North Las Vegas and trying to, you know, almost like the white flight situation. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like we don't really know each other 
anymore. And so I feel like as a community, we don't really get together anymore. So that was an initiative for us to say, okay, we want to take care of our community and we want to bridge the gap between our elders and the youngsters. You know what I'm saying? And we want to go and and show that we love our community by cleaning up, but taking out the arduous task of thinking about Man, we about to be cleaning up our own neighborhood. Right, so we right, bring right. we bring a DJ down there. We bring the food out there. We bring the vibe. Mm-hmm. So you don't really feel like you're doing work. You just getting with your partners and you you meeting other people. Yeah. But you're really doing something for your community. So that's what Beautify the Block is about. Man, salute. I, I love it because uh, that's the best part that I, I've. I, that's one of the niches I've haven't seen is nightlife coming into the community and making it that beautiful. Right. Right. And, and it really does. It really means the name. Like you guys really. Exemplify what the name means of Beautify the Block. So salute to y'all again for Beautify the Block. My man. Uh, uh, and now I need we, we need to get in your no sauce. sauce. <laughs> Cause we get lost in the sauce. We also get lost in the sauce. So in this segment, oh, this gives us more insight of our guests where we ask, like, what's your special ingredient for your business? Like, tell us why nobody can replicate what you do. So tell us. I mean, what, it, what it, makes it do? Yes, it would be the sw- the swag. I feel like that we put into it. Talk about the swag. You know what I'm like, like, like the same way when we're closing a venue or we're closing a new event or whatever it may be that we're pursuing. Um, the number one spiel I love to give is that we're we're tailored to we're tailor made for whatever it is that we're doing. Oh, I like so, that. So, um, yeah, we not just so say if we bring in something to CSM, we not gonna we not we not gonna pull another event from somewhere else and try to do it here. We gonna tailor make an event for what it is that we're doing here. Mm-hmm. So that's how we like to go into all of our venues or just even new nights or whatever. It's like we party with a purpose, right? Or something my brother came up with. You know what I'm saying? Like everything that we do, it's a lot of it's a lot of thought and effort that goes into it and a lot of swag. You know what I'm saying? Like. Can't no one out swag us, that's for sure. You know what I'm, saying? Hey, I'm gonna keep you the swag. Talk, 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 I heard you, the, you, the, you, the, you the swag surf king. So you know <laughs> hey, <saying>? listen. <laughs> hey, hey, turn that swag surf on. It's, it's crazy. I will admit that started because of y'all. <laughs> it started because of y'all. Because as soon oh, yeah, as it came, people, people didn't know how to do it properly. Number one, you yeah, know what they I'm did. Saying? You had to come from somewhere where you know you got to start off slow. Slow, you yeah. Got to go left. Thank you. Like, I, and I then learned right, then right, and, and I had then, to tell people because yeah. they were like, they were like, oh. I'm like, hey, yeah, no, nah, nah. I, I was yeah. like, no left. Yeah. And it was like, okay. Yeah. And then I was like, boom. And after yeah. that, they look at me. It's crazy. <laughs> Every time now, so I start come on, folks was like, we're sure. And I'm like, oh, damn. You like Kurt, I, hey, you like Kurt Franklin on it now. You hey, got to direct the choir. got to direct the choir. I got you. That really, and I have, to, I have y'all to thank for that. Because if it wasn't for y'all event, that wouldn't have started for me. Like, and it's crazy. I'm just like, man, this is it's just, like, just go left, right? But we got to do it. You know what I'm yeah, saying? You got to start off slow. Gotta start you got to have a sauce on it. You, you do. have a sauce on it for sure. Sure. So what is y'all secret ingredient? Like Nat, like gave us the sauce. Mm-hmm. What's the secret ingredient that adds for Matt and Mizzy to bring PM entertainment, bring the impact that y'all have? What's that secret sauce? I think for me on my side, you know what I'm saying? It'll probably be a two sided answer because we both bring two different things to the table. Right. I think for me it's it's the quality of music. Love it. You know what whether it's me or whether it's uh whoever I got on the turntables, right. you know, from people like uh uh Icebreak. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, D-Money, Shane O'Mac. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Bringing up the younger generation. We got Chloe Brene in the mix. Um, Kilo. Uh, you know, we try to make sure we got a certain caliber of DJs mm-hmm. who are known for doing doing what they do. Right. Um, so that would be my, my, my secret ingredient that I bring to the table as far as PM Entertainment and what we uh, have for the public, for the people. It would definitely be the musical side of things. Love it. I think for me... Um, I'm more so of a visionary, bro. Like I, I, I really, I, I think of myself almost like an offensive coordinator. Ooh, um, highly important. Keep going. Absolutely. So I think, you know, with being able to see what talent looks like or seeing potential before that person might not, might even see their own potential, you know. Um, also with outside of the music thing, you know, seeing people who fit the piece of what PM Entertainment exudes, right? You know, because of course. We want to expand. Everything is about getting bigger and better, right? Right. Um, so it's it's about having those right pieces to the puzzle. So I feel like, you know, I'm good with picking out those pieces and bringing them back to the team to see if the team likes it. Mm-hmm. You know, so I feel like we, we match very well when it comes to, you know, what PM Entertainment is about. Uh, yeah. I wholeheartedly agree. And I just thank y'all for giving us the no sauce, sauce, by the way. <laughs> thank y'all for giving us that sauce. <laughs> Shout out to Gucci. <laughs> but now, you know, uh, I want to thank y'all again for coming on this show. I be, like, when I tell y'all, 
this when we started this show, <clears throat> and and me and Curtis were in here trying to figure out the room. Sarah, we were all trying to figure out this room, and I was like, yeah, there's a whole list of people that I had, I had to give to our boss to like, hey, these are all these people I wanted to interview. And there was there was a select few. I was like, I can't wait to get this person on the show. I can't wait to get them on the show. And I, I could not wait to get y'all on here because I wanted to make sure we was right. We had our flow. Um, but timing is everything. And y'all was always on the go. And I was like, man, when I reach out, I hope that y'all got time. Right. <laughs> and and I just want to thank y'all. Give you all flowers. Thank you, bro. Man. You know, we it, always love you, bro. Nah, for real. Anytime, Anytime bro. It. That means a lot. And now we're going to go into the happy hour, ladies and gentlemen. Drinks up. And we actually got something for y'all. Hold up. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On behalf of the Business Information Buffet Podcast, also known as the Bill Podcast, where everybody eats, these two gifts are for y'all. My man, Matt yeah, Mizzy. Absolutely. My man, Akeem. Appreciate you, This bro. is for y'all, man. Like you see, you, Curtis, you're trying to, I see what you're doing over there. <laughs> trying so, to get them going. Trying to get me going. In. <laughs> so in this Sorry. segment, this is where between the, get, the yeah, yeah. guests and the host, where we take a toast to success and fulfillment, right? We ask what's going on, great, big, or small. So we take a toast with apple cider. I wish it was something else. But it's, uh, we got apple cider. <laughs> <laughs> so what is something going great that we can toast to for y'all? Expansion. I, Expansion. I we have another. Sure. We have another night coming up. Come on, uh, real soon. Friday nights. Yes, sir. Uh, now, uh, to uh, to be a, put us at seven days a week. Yeah, facts. <laughs> Outside of that, we Good. we have started a, a Latin night, so we have Latin uh, Mondays and Wednesdays. Okay. Mondays is at Nora. Okay. Uh, Wednesdays at Severs. Uh, Latin brunch on the way. Latin brunch uh, coming soon on a Saturday. Right. Um, concerts coming very, very soon. Come on. Uh, Festivals on the road. Festivals. Come on, man. And you know, his birthday just it just passed, so salute to my brother. Oh, man. Absolutely. Happy <laughs> birthday. Happy belated. I appreciate it. My brother's birthday coming up. so we It show is coming up. I, I can't forget that day. Now, I'm going to always remember your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll even out there, I'll make sure I text you, bro. My man. I got you. Um, um, outside of that, you know, uh, we got another beautiful block on the way. Oh come on! Uh, so it's a lot of a lot of things in the city going on, but you know, one thing about it, you know, I want to tell everybody to trust God. Trust. Oh yes, please. You know. Yes. Because sometimes I feel like you know, with with success, I feel like we forget about the foundation mm. of why we're here. You know, and so uh, you know, trust God and trust the process. Trust the process. Yeah. And we're gonna toast to that to Matt, Mizzy, my man, Hakeem. Salute to y'all. Toast to y'all, man. Oh, Much man. love. Love, love. Love. Yes, sir. So, please, tell them where they can find you, gentlemen. Instagram's handles, all that stuff. Please let them know where they can find you. PM Entertainment, 702 on Instagram. Prince Akeem, 702 on Instagram. DJ Missy Matt, 702 on Instagram. You know what I'm saying? Make sure y'all tap in. Please tap in with me. I got I got my joint hack. You know what I'm saying? So I'm to talk, we gotta tap in, man. Please. Again. <laughs> Again, thank y'all gentlemen for coming on to the show. We deep appreciate you. We love y'all, man. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes for our episode. Um, this is the Business Information Buffet Podcast, also known as the Bit Podcast, where everybody eats. I am your host, Sean Toy, with our DJ, DJ Ice Break. DJ Ice Break. And we're out of here, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you next time.